Hello and welcome to Painting with Rob Boss. Uh, today we're going to be drawing and painting a mixed media landscape. Today we're going to be needing a pencil, watercolors, colored pencils, and tempera paint, along with some brushes, a cup of water, and a paper towel or a rag. So today we're going to be drawing a landscape. Uh, so we're going to start by sketching it out. We're going to be focusing on the idea of space and specifically foreground, middle ground, and background. So first I'm going to draw my foreground. I want my foreground to run along the bottom of the paper here. This is eventually going to be my most detailed area. And I'm going to draw in uh, the ground first. Now I'm adding a little bush on the right hand side. When we're drawing landscapes, we can kind of be creative with how we arrange these. I'm adding a second bush back here. Yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but I'd like you to show the skills that I'm kind of demonstrating here. So you can add similar elements, or you can do the same thing I'm doing, uh, but you can also make it your own, add some little touches. Uh, just try to make sure you have kind of similar things going on to what I've got going on. So now I'm drawing a tree. So I've drawn the roots in now. I'm going to have the tree kind of come up in front here. So now I've got a pretty decent kind of foreground mapped out for me, and I'll be moving on to the next layers after this. So for my tree, basically, uh, I want to just have branches or cylinders, uh, basically, that continue to divide and get smaller as they divide, and those are the branches. I'm not going to put any leaves on this tree. I'm going to make it bare, maybe a dead tree. Uh, but you can also add leaves to yours if you want. We'll talk about uh, how to do the leaves when we work on those bushes over there. You can do the same thing in a tree if you want to add leaves to yours. Again, this is just about kind of learning the skills here and utilizing them. So feel free to get creative with how you do this. I'm adding a path down here. A path is a nice thing generally to have in a landscape. Uh, people tend to like them because it literally gives the eye a path to follow through the landscape. And as we've talked about with composition, people like knowing how to look at a picture. So giving them uh, guides like paths, uh, which is maybe one of the most obvious things you could do, uh, are really useful. And while it's used a lot and maybe is a little cliche, uh, that is because it is effective. So now I'm drawing kind of a horizon line for my middle ground here. For my middle ground, I'm going to have it kind of come along from the left. I'm going to add a lake over there. And then I'm going to have it kind of transition into a mountain uh, that comes up on the right. Now I'm adding my background. For this, I'm just going to do kind of two horizon lines uh, with mountains. i got some mountains popping up there. I'm going to do two of those. One that's a little bit closer and one that's a little farther away. And we're going to keep those layers really simple and use cool colors to create some atmospheric perspective. All right, so I've got a foreground middle ground, and background. Now I'm adding in kind of my lake. This is the shoreline here. And again, you can make your shoreline however you want. And I'm going to extend my path kind of coming along this way. So we kind of crest the hill of the foreground here, descend down into the middle ground towards that background. Nice little visual walk. A little visual hike through beautiful scenery. Now let's try to make it a little more beautiful with some color. So I'm going to pop open my watercolors. I'm going to wet my cakes, let them soak a little bit, and then we'll uh, start watercoloring the whole thing here. 
I'm going to lay my palette down here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm on a tilted surface, so it makes it a little bit harder. If you can set your watercolors on a level surface, they're easier to mix, easier to use the tray. I'm using uh, some thin blue to paint the sky, and it went on a little darker than I want, so now I'm just adding some water and spreading that blue out. We don't want to make the sky too dark. If we uh, have paint that's too thick on there, we can use a little water. We can add water to it and pull it to other areas uh, to lighten it up a little bit. Again, remember, we don't want to go full saturation on most of our picture. We want to save high saturation for areas of emphasis. So one way to desaturate our watercolors is to add water to them so that more of the paper shows through and the color becomes desaturated. You can also add other colors or uh, black to them. But for this, that's not appropriate because we don't want to make this any darker. We want the sky to be a nice light blue. And if it ends up too light, you can always add a little pigment to it and spread it around as long as it's wet. You can even this out as much as you'd like. The pigment should move around fairly easily uh, once it's wet. I'm going to mix a little bit of green and blue now uh, to kind of desaturate that green and get a little more muted. I'll add a little more blue to it, get a little darker. And then get a little more washy. And now I'm going to paint in my lake. So uh, your lake can be kind of a range of colors, uh, anywhere from a blue to a green. Uh, just depending on the body of water, uh, they can have different colors to them. Uh, one of the things we're going to want with this lake is uh, some lighter areas towards the shore and some darker areas for the deeper water, if we can get that. That's one of those subtleties that'll take it up a level uh, without having to do anything too difficult or technical. I'm gonna make sure I paint all the way up to that line there. I wanna make sure everything gets covered with color as much as I can. Now I'm adding a little bit of darker blue to some of those deeper areas. And you can see because my watercolor there is still wet, it's kind of bleeding. And you can use that effect uh, to create certain textures. I think it works kind of nicely with this water. Uh, but if you don't want it to bleed, always remember to make sure it's dry first. And that's one of the reasons I moved down from the sky to the lake here so I could work on two uh, separate areas and they wouldn't run into each other and start bleeding. I could try to make this transition kind of subtle here. I'm going to kind of pull the edges a little bit. Now I'm going to take my blue here and I'm going to desaturate it a little bit with some orange. We usually end up with a better painting if we desaturate most of our colors. A little more orange to this. I'm trying to get uh, kind of a low saturation dark purple color here. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to paint these uh, most distant mountains here. So atmospheric perspective is this idea that things that are far away are going to be uh, kind of lower contrast, so kind of grayer, uh, less strong blacks and whites. Uh, they're also going to be bluer uh, because of the atmosphere between us and them. So for these most distant mountains, I want a nice kind of dark blue purpley color. Now I'm going to just add a little bit of water to pull that down. I can add more pigment in there too if that transition is not gradual enough. As you can see, the pigment from up there is starting to move down a little bit. Mixing a little more of that dark blue purple, desaturating it. The quickest way to desaturate a color is with its uh, complement. So for the purple, I want to add a yellow or a orange, something along those lines. 
a little more blue. That looks good. There's not necessarily a perfect color you need to get here. Something in this neighborhood should work nicely. And I'm going to let that flow into the next area just to make sure that I get the paper entirely covered. We're going to be painting over it. All right, so now I have the furthest layer of the background pretty much complete. Now I'm going to mix kind of a light brown color. So I'm mixing yellow and brown. I could also incorporate a little bit of orange. But I'm just going to use this as kind of the base layer uh, for the ground here. And I'm going to be adding some color to this. I'm going to be adding some greenery uh, a little bit later. But I want to lay down a base layer. It's just a light brown. Again, you have a lot of range with this. Dirt is all kinds of colors. Uh, as long as you keep it in a neighborhood that looks realistic, you should be totally fine. It doesn't have to match mine exactly. I'm also going to paint my color a slightly differentiated color. Oh, you can see it bled a little bit. I caught a wet patch. But that's okay. You can usually kind of blend that in or hit it with a paper towel if you need to pull it off. But as I was saying, I'm going to make my path a slightly different brown later. So I kind of want to be planning that. Uh, but I can make the ground pretty much whatever color I want. We're going to be coming back over it anyway. Um, as long as it looks like a realistic, viable dirt color, we're totally fine. And you can see I'm skipping that closest layer of background for now. And that's just to let things dry a little bit. I'll be back for it later. I want to paint all the way up to the edge of my bushes there. Maybe even get into the bushes a little bit. Uh, we're going to be using tempera paint in the foreground, so we're going to be able to cover things up if we need to. All right, now I'm going to kind of sit and let that dry. I want to paint in the path here, make it a little bit darker. We're going to be adding to this later uh, with the colored pencil. So we'll get a little bit of texture in there. And we can differentiate it a little bit more uh, at that time as well. All right, so I'm actually going to go ahead and paint uh, the foreground as well. Uh, for the foreground, I'm going to be um, using tempera paint, as I said. But I'm going to do a base layer of watercolor uh, all over the whole painting first. And that's going to help just to get everything covered, uh, make it easier to uh, not miss any spots. Because we don't want to have uh, any or, or very much, at least, white paper showing through. We want to have like a finished uh, painting at the end. If you wanted to include clouds or something like that, you could keep a little bit of white. Uh, you could leave some areas of the sky not painted. Um, you could add some shadows onto the bottom of the clouds, just real light, thin, uh, black watercolor, or maybe a purple. Uh, but we're, I'm not going to do that, but uh, not today. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could. That would be valid white space. Uh, but for the most part, we at least want to have a little bit of paint on the entire surface. All right, so now I've got this ground all painted in. Uh, I'm going to move back to the background again. So I've got kind of two layers of backgrounds. Uh, of background, I've got two kind of mountain ranges back there. I'm going to mix a little bit of green for the next one and make them a little, a little greener because they're closer. And we can see some of the uh, green color of the mountains there. It's a forested mountain. Uh, but we're still going to keep it real simple. Just kind of a green uh, mountain line there. But it makes the image a little more complex, a little more going on. You can have just one kind of mountain line there and still call it a, a background. Uh, I wouldn't argue with you but I think it makes it a little more interesting and complex if we got a second. So for the background here, for these mountain ranges in the sky, we want to keep them light. Again, we want to use that atmospheric perspective to make them a little more distant. So if we put in any high saturation or dark colors, uh, it's going to mess up that effect. So we want to keep 
uh, the paint pretty washy or uh, desaturated or both. So I'm making this line a little bit darker, adding a little more blue to it. Kind of give it a little more atmospheric perspective there. And now I'm going to kind of add on to the mountain range here. So I'm going to add some trees kind of growing up the side of the mountain here. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay down some green uh, to start them off and to define our green areas. Then we're going to come back in uh, with some colored pencil to add some detail. So the idea using the mixed media strategy here is to uh, emphasize that atmospheric perspective. We're going to have high detail, high contrast in the foreground uh, with our tempera paint. We're going to have medium detail, medium contrast in the middle ground using the watercolors and colored pencils. And in the background, we're just going to use the watercolors and we're going to have low detail and low contrast uh, to push that idea of atmospheric perspective. All right, so now we're starting to get a little more definition and color in here. Starting to pop a little better. So now I'm doing a dry brush technique. I want to get some paint on my brush, and then I want to wipe most of the paint off using a paper towel or a rag. Then I go back in and I paint with my uh, now dry brush. And what that does is it gives like kind of a broken uh, stroke. Uh, which is good for like grassy textures. So the, the stroke marks you make should be kind of broken and uh, look like grass. And that's really one of the main things that watercolor uh, focuses on or emphasizes is using different textures um, and different brush techniques to achieve those textures. So we've got like wet on wet painting uh, where we paint on top of something that's wet in order to get some of that bleed effect, uh, which could be good for water-like textures. Uh, we've got a dry brush technique where we wipe most of the paint off of our brush and uh, we get kind of a grassy texture. And we can also do a stippling technique where we kind of make little dots. We kind of peck the paper with our brush and that can be good for making leafy textures. So watercolor in a lot of ways is really uh, well suited for um, landscape painting, especially if you don't want too, too much detail. Uh, you can keep it fairly simple, but get a really nice painting uh, using just watercolors. So now I'm going to add um, like some grassy spots, uh, grassy patches to the path, just kind of intermittent areas where the grass is growing up. And I'm going to paint in uh, our bushes here in the foreground. So as I said earlier, we're going to add uh, tempera paint to this later, um, but I'm just going to do a base layer of watercolor uh, just to kind of color everything in the beginning phase here. So as you see, we're getting to where we have a pretty nice watercolor painting. Um, if I were looking at this and making critique uh, suggestions, I would say it's really lacking in contrast and detail. Um, it kind of all looks the same and it's kind of light and uh, mushy. There's not a lot of uh, detail to it. So we're gonna kind of focus on emphasizing that as we move forward. I'm adding a little bit of grass down here. And a little bit over here as well. And you can have fun with this. You can do whatever you want. You don't need to put grass in the same spots as me. Uh, for these, we wanna maybe use slightly thicker paint um, because this is the foreground layer, we want it to have a lot of detail and contrast, and we can make the colors a little more intense. So you can see for the background layers, I just painted right over my tree. I didn't try to paint around it. Um, since we're using tempera paint later, we don't really need to worry about uh, keeping that area clean because we can paint right over it. So now I'm going to go back in and redefine some of those branches. I can still see my pencil lines through the watercolor I put down. So uh, a lot of times this layering method uh, will be much easier than trying to paint around all those branches. That would be a real kind of nightmare. And if we're just doing watercolor, there are techniques to kind of protect that. You can mask it with masking tape or 
uh, special masking fluid, uh, but we're not going to worry about all that today. We're trying to keep it simple today. So you can see I've used darker brown watercolor for the tree here to kind of differentiate it from the ground down there. I'm not too worried about getting it entirely covered because I'm going to be coming back with the tempera paint later. But I just kind of want to lay in everything to start. All right, now we're going to switch over to our, ta-da, <laughs> colored pencils. We're going to use the colored pencils to add detail to the middle ground. So I'm going to add trees, and this is my basic tree layout. I've got a light side of the tree, and then I've got a dark side of the tree. One's being hit by the light, one's in shadow. And just that simple strategy there will give form to your tree and it will make them pop. So once you have the light side and the dark side, you can add in a little bit of a trunk. You can add it sticking through the branches in some places if you want. Uh, so kind of nice details, uh, but they're not too, too important. Uh, as long as we've got kind of light sides and dark sides to our trees, we should be good. So I'm just going in with my light green pencil and laying in my light sides. You could use a lighter green and a darker green uh, for the light and dark side. You could also probably sneak in a kind of more blue color for the dark side. That'd probably still work just fine. Uh, you could add some lighter or yellow highlights into the trees if you wanted to. Um, that would be a nice touch. I'm not going to worry about that because we're trying to keep it relatively simple today. Now I'm adding the dark side to the trees here. So I'm going to kind of cover this entire hill over here with these details. Um, I'm going to be adding all sorts of little touches to uh, the middle ground here with these colored pencils. And you can add your own touches as well. Anything that you might want to add. You want to put a little boat out on the lake. You want to paint or uh, draw a little cabin or a shack or something. All that would be fine. Add some people in. Any of that. You can get creative with this. Uh, but just try to focus on the idea of using just the watercolors for the background, uh, watercolors and colored pencils for the middle ground, and then we'll get the temper paint on the foreground there. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit, uh, and you kind of work along as best you can. You can pause the video at the end of this session if you need some time to catch up. All right, so here I am going super fast. Again, you just want to add the light side and the dark side of the trees here. After this, I'm going to add some more details into the grass over there. Uh, maybe some details on the lake. I think I'm going to add some driftwood, things of that nature. Um, so really, we're focused on the light and the dark with the tree pattern here. And then just adding some uh, details to the grass areas. Uh, you can add just like thin lines uh, and slightly different colors. I've got mine kind of extending into the water a little bit kind of some driftwood. Uh, any details you might want to add are fine. All right, so now we're going to move into the foreground here. Uh, so you can pause the video here if you need to catch up on that middle ground, uh, and then we'll kind of continue. All right, so here I'm going back in with my pencil. I'm kind of redefining some of these lines to clarify them a little bit uh, to make it easier to paint. I'm trying to retrace some of the branches I lost here. Um, so you can kind of go back in with that pencil if you need to, uh, or you can just kind of paint them in freehand. Uh, either way will work. I'm just trying to kind of add thickness so that they gradually thin as the branches spread out. If you want to add some wildlife to this tree, you can do that as well. You can paint in some birds, maybe a little squirrel friend. I used to have a squirrel friend. That's right, Rob Boss used to live out in the woods, off the grid. My only friend, a squirrel. His name was Roger. Roger was a pretty good squirrel. If any of you ever run into Roger, tell him Rob says hi. I'm going to add some uh, rocks here, some stones. Uh, add some outlines to the bushes here. Uh, these details like rocks and stones and just kind of some texture uh, on the paths uh, add nice touches to the image, make it a little more realistic. And I'm also going to kind of define where my shading is here. So as things become closer to us, uh, the shading gets a little more complex because we need to have the shading and the details. 
Uh, so we want to have shadows and texture. I'll talk a little bit more how to do that when we start adding the temper paint. I'm going to add a little cairn here, which is a little pile of stones marking the trail. Not that it would be necessary with this clear, beautiful trail, uh, but I think it's a little a nice touch to the picture. And I'm also thinking as I sketch these out where the shadows are going to go. And the shadows are going to be on the lower uh, right-hand side of things. I've taped my painting down because it was curling a little bit. If you have that issue, taping it down to a drawing board or the table is a good solution. Now I'm going to start adding my tempera paint. So I'm mixing a brown color here. Just kind of adding all three primaries together. And then from there I adjust the color. So if it looks too red or too... Looks maybe a little too purple. I'll just add the uh, complementary color. So if it's too red, I add green. So I've added a little green. And maybe it gets a little too purple here. I want to add a little red. A little yellow. And I just kind of adjust the brown until it gets where I want. Uh, mixing brown shades is pretty tricky. You really have to have an eye for like which three of the primaries is too prevalent in this brown, and then add uh, the opposite. So now that I've got a nice brown mixed, I'm going to paint on my tree. With these foreground uh, objects, the really important thing, as with most of this, is that we have light and shadow. So I want to lay down a base coat, which is the local color of the object, uh, which is going to be brown here. And then I'm going to add a shadow tone to it. Now I'm not going to worry too much about highlights on this. I can add some highlights. Uh, I don't want the highlights to be too bright or intense uh, because the tree is not very reflective. It's not very shiny. So I might add a uh, slightly lighter brown, but I don't need like white highlights or anything. I'm going to take a slightly thinner brush and try to finish the... Now it's popping up again. <laughs> there we go. Just weigh that down. <laughs> I'll take a slightly thinner brush here and I'm going to paint in the branches. You want to try to use the correct tool for the job. So you might need to go to a narrower brush. I like to use uh, filbert brushes. Uh, filbert brush has a rounded tip and uh, if you apply pressure very lightly you can get a thin line with it. But if you apply a little more pressure it'll thicken it up so it can be really useful. All right, so I'm just gonna paint in all of these branches and then I'll darken my brown and I'll paint in the shadow uh, on each branch. And the shadow is just gonna be on the underside of each branch. And if there's anything that has a surface that's facing to the right, I'll put a shadow on that as well. Um, I'm also gonna be using a darker tone to apply some texture uh, to the tree. And just kind of mimic that bark a little bit. You can make your branches go however feels natural to you. And I'm going to add some highlights. Okay, I'm going to lighten this first. So there's my lighter brown. And these lighter areas are going to be anywhere that's facing to the left or up. So these highlights and shadows should really be emphasized in the foreground. Um, again, because of that atmospheric perspective idea, uh, we want to have more detail, which means more uh, difference between highlight and shadow, uh, clearer textures, uh, smaller objects, all of that uh, throughout the foreground. So you can see adding that highlight really starts to pop that tree out from the background there. All right, so I'm going to speed this up a bit. None of this has been edited. This is exactly how fast I paint when I go full speed. This isn't even full speed. This is like, oh, like 50%. So I'm mixing a darker color into my brown. I'm using that same pool of brown. If you've got brown left over, it's good to use that same pool so it's a matching brown. But I'm darkening it. I'm adding some red and blue to make it more purple and a little bit of black. I think I go a little too dark with this, but to correct a little bit. 
Uh, but that looks decent. And now I'm going to add some shadows into my tree. Again, uh, going high contrast, kind of dark for the shadows. Uh, we'll give it a little more pop and push the foreground forward. So as a creative choice, I don't think it's too bad. Um, but I'm just kind of adding that to uh, the lower parts of the tree and the uh, right-hand side of the tree. I'm also going to add a little bit of texture as well. So the cracks in the bark uh, will also create shadows in a similar way. Uh, so I'm just going to add those cracks in. And you really want to be thinking as you're adding these cracks about line quality, maybe trying to use some nice calligraphic lines that are thicker in some places and thinner in others by varying your brush pressure. And now I'm going to make kind of a grayer brown and I'm going to paint these rocks. Any kind of gray to brown color should be fine for these. Again, same idea. I want to paint in the local color there and then add a little bit of shadow on the underside and on the right hand side. And there's a little bit of cast shadow on the ground as well. So you can see now that we're starting to get more definition in the foreground here compared to the middle ground and especially the background. And that's the whole idea here is to set the layers of, of uh, space apart from each other. Okay, now I'm going to wipe this out. This is a good way to clean your palette quickly, uh, especially if you don't want to lose the paint in the little wells. Uh, you just wipe out the middle section, and I'm kind of cleaning my brush out. So I'm wiping it on this paper here. You could use a scrap paper, you could use a sketchbook, anything like that. Now I'm going to add this dark green. So for these bushes, I want to get them uh, kind of higher saturation than most of the other stuff, because they're in the foreground there. And uh, I'm taking them pretty dark. We're going to be adding uh, light and shadow to these bushes as we proceed to give them uh, kind of roundness. Uh, but we're going to lay down that base color first. Just a regular kind of leaf green. Any sort of green that replicates a leaf color should be totally fine here. It doesn't need to be exactly like mine. Uh, although I think that's pretty close to what's coming out of the bottle. So yours might be pretty similar. Now I'm adding some more uh, detail to the grass here. So just coming in with some of that thicker tempera paint, mixing those in with my watercolor grass that I've already laid down. So to get a nice grass texture, it'd be a good idea to mix various shades of uh, green and kind of add them together, mixing them together. Uh, if you really wanted to make it look good, you could think about what angle each blade of grass is going at and how the light would be hitting it. Uh, it's not fully necessary. So you can just kind of adjust that and add that as you would like. Um, the grass can be as dense or sparse as you want. You can put as many kind of a range of colors as you want. You can have some browner grass and some yellow grass, uh, whatever. You can really play in that space for as long as you want to. All right, now I'm gonna mix a lighter green. Uh, to add some texture to the bushes here. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm going to uh, stipple this on to make kind of a leafy texture. So I just want it to basically contrast uh, the green that I already have. And I want it to be a little bit lighter for the light side. I'm also going to in some, stipple in some darker green or some more blue green for the shadows. So stippling, I'm just kind of pecking the surface of the paper. And the idea is to just get uh, a little bit of texture on there. So it's not quite as uh, different as I'd like it to be. It's not really contrasting and popping, so I'm lightening it up a little bit, and that's a little bit better. And uh, I think about the aspen trees when I'm painting these leaves, and if you've seen the aspens before, depending on the angle of the leaves, you can get a lot of different colors and tones, and that's kind of the texture we want to achieve here. Uh, just a lot of different uh, colors and tones throughout. Um, we want them to all be pretty light on the areas where the light's going to be hitting it, uh, but we want darker uh, kind of undertones because the leaves aren't a solid layer and we can see shadows through the leaves a lot of times. Another way to do this that would have worked well is to paint a base layer of the shadow tone I want and then stipple lighter leaves on top where uh, the bush is being hit by the light. 
So that's another approach you can use on this. As you can see with this, I'm leaving a lot of my watercolor showing in the foreground. Uh, if you want to do all tempera paint to really pop it and push it forward, you can do that. You can cover the entire uh, foreground layer with that. Um, but I think it gives kind of a nice contrast using the combination. I think I added a few things but forgot to record. But I basically stippled in a darker blue-green into the shadow areas. And you can see along the bush there uh, that those shadow areas have uh, darker blue-green areas that are kind of helping to round out those bushes and define them. And I added a little more range of lighter values in there as well. Here I'm adding a little more shadow so you can see that. Uh, the shadows can also be showing through in the light areas uh, occasionally, um, but they'll have their higher concentration in the uh, dark shadow areas that are on the lower uh, part of the forms or on the right-hand side. Uh, I'm adding some flowers or some berries, just some uh, red specks of color into the grass here. Uh, you can do that as well. That's kind of a nice touch. You could add some berries to your bushes, uh, some flowers on the ground. Uh, you can do a variety of colors. Kind of play around with this. Uh, we want to have a lot of contrast here, so the shadows and highlights are good to add. Um, also, uh, pops of color are really nice to add to the foreground area here. Doing some yellow flowers over on this side. Oh, kind of a dirty brush. I have to clean that. Just kind of popping them in. You can put them wherever you want. You know, make this your own. All right, so that's our uh, basic painting there. Uh, so you can see our clear, defined background, middle ground, and foreground areas. Um, and you can see how using that atmospheric perspective technique really pushes the space and makes it feel uh, like a landscape that you could walk into. It's a real uh, hiking adventure for the old eyes. <laughs> Now I'm mixing kind of a purpley tone. I'm going to desaturate that a little bit. And I've kind of got a dark brown. I'm just going to make some branches kind of sticking out of the bushes here. Maybe lay a little bit of uh, some twigs and branches on the ground. Uh, you can really just add in whatever details you'd like here. Add a little texture to the path. Uh, but the more I add to the foreground, the more details, the more it's going to kind of pop that out and move it forward. A little texture on that path is always a nice touch. Add some smaller sort of stones. I'm not going to fully paint them, but add some outlines. And we've got a nice little landscape. So I hope that was useful to you. Uh, the main things to remember are use that atmospheric perspective. Use your uh, mixed media to kind of define those layers of space. Uh, lots of contrast and detail on that foreground. Less in the middle ground. And then uh, lots of blues and low contrast grays in the background. So anyway, uh, I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, enjoy, and we will see you next time on Painting with Rob Boss.
Goodbye.